Shall we stand together? It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. Can you say amen? Amen. Let's just raise our hands. Let's ask God to move in this place to have his way in this service. Lord, we love you and we're thankful, God, for this day. We're thankful for all your many blessings. God, we ask that you would touch us today. Have your way in this service. Let your Shekinah glory fill this place today. Lord, we ask that you would move upon us. In Jesus' name, we'll praise you. We'll thank you for it. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord and give God some praise.
lift your hands and sing, He is the hope for this nation. Hope for the nation, Father of every generation. People everywhere, people everywhere. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we love you, Jesus. We magnify your name, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Step out of your pew, go shake someone's hands, tell them how glad you are to see them in the house of the Lord.
greet you in the name of the Lord. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord again. Can you say amen? amen. Just a moment, we're going to receive our offering. Our ushers are going to come, but by way of information, the bathrooms are open. Open. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. We also want to thank Brother Joseph Hardegree and a number of others who came and worked here. We would uh, try to call all the names. I might miss someone, but we thank you if you did anything to help us here to get these bathrooms back going. We appreciate it. There are just a couple of more little things to do, but they are open and usable as of today. So, and... Uh, Whatever we did back there, I haven't seen them since they've opened them up, but whatever we did is ours. That's right. Paid for. Hallelujah. <laughs> Nobody's going to come repo our mokies. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isn't that great and comforting to know? <laughs> Hallelujah. So our ushers are going to come. We're going to receive our tithing and offering this morning. We thank you, as we always do, for your very consistent giving to the cause of God. We are where we are because you give. And I understand that we're going into the holidays. This coming up week will be Thanksgiving. We'll be having our midweek service on Tuesday. Brother Ashley will tell you more about that. And then Thursday is Thanksgiving. Right behind that, it seems like it'll only be a few days, but it's a few weeks, will be Christmas. And we understand that that entails a lot of family time, maybe a lot of extra expense for everybody. But we thank you that you are mindful of the house of God yes. and the work of the Lord. Yes. You are always mindful, and we thank you for that so very much. So if you would, we'll let you be seated again immediately. But let's stand for prayer and honor to God. We thank him. Someone said, why do you pray before you get it? Well, because God sees things that are not as though they already are. So we're going to thank him for what he already knows that you're going to do out of your heart today. So we're going to think. The scripture says, Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, Amen. pressed down, Amen. shaken together, Amen. running over, Amen. shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Luke 6, 38. And everybody say the Bible. the Bible. We're going to pray. Lord, bless this offering today. We thank you for already in advance for the gift and the giver, for what your people do for the work and the cause of God. In Jesus' name, and everyone together said amen. amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord today. 
Uh, we do want to go to the Lord together in prayer. We want to continue to pray for Sister Floyd. This is uh, Sister Denisha Patterson's grandmother. Uh, I want to pray that God would just continue to touch that situation. I believe hospice has been called in to take care of her. So we want to pray that God would just touch that situation. Also, uh, Sister, <coughs> excuse me, Sister Michelle Hendry has the flu, bless her heart. And so she, this is our nursery worker. She does a wonderful job in our nursery. And so um, we're just, I told her we would pray for her. Um, nothing worse than being sick during the holidays. Amen. So we want to pray that God would just touch her body. If you have a special unspoken request, you can signify it by the uplifting of your hands. God knows what they are. If I could ask you to stand all across the building. Uh, we always say this and we're going to continue to say it. If you have a special need that you would like the ministry to pray for you, please come down. We'll be more than glad to pray for you and pray the prayer of faith over you. Amen? Amen. Amen. We believe in prayer and we think prayer that still works. Amen. Let's just take all these needs before the Lord. Shall we, Lord? We love you and we're thankful, God, for this day. We're thankful for all your many blessings. God, we ask that you would touch us today. Lord, touch all the unspoken requests. Touch those that are sick. Let your healing virtue flow through their bodies, God. We know it's by your stripes that we are healed, and we claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you would move upon every unspoken request. God, you know the work that needs to be done in each situation. In Jesus' name, we'll praise you and we'll thank you. Continue to stand and worship as they sing.
Sing my life is not my own. Pastor has a message that he's going to share with us this morning if, if he, he goes according to what he has shared with me. And I'd like for us, Brother Ashley, to come back and sing this again. And I'd like to challenge you to open up your heart to hear what the Lord has to say. I've been deeply moved by what I, I, the part that I know that he's going to share. I've been deeply moved by that. I think it's appropriate. I think it's timely. I think it's challenging. And I think it's true. So let's just ask the Lord, Lord, today I'm going to hold nothing back. I'm going to receive what you speak to me. So often what God speaks to us, we can't fathom that it could be because we can't see how it could be. But don't let that stop you. Don't hold anything back. Yield to the Lord today in the message and let the ministry of the word go into your heart. Brother Ashley. Sing everything I give, everything I give to you. I'm withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Come on, sing.
place right now. I wonder if you could just lay your hand on somebody next to you and begin to pray over them. Speak a word of faith over their life right now. We don't know the circumstances they came here facing. They don't, we don't know the trials, the difficulties. But let's lift our brothers and sisters up in Christ. If you have to cross the aisle, cross the aisle. Just connect with someone and put your hand on them. And speak a word of faith into their life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Move in their life, God. Let the power of the Holy Ghost saturate them, Jesus. Touch each and every one of the circumstances that they face today, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give it all to you, God. Put it into your hands. Faith believing, trusting in you for all things. You told us to trust in you with all of our heart. Lean not into our own understanding, but in all that ways acknowledge you and you would direct our paths, oh God. We put it in your hands, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, bring healing, bring salvation, deliverance, oh God, restoration, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Withholding nothing. Hallelujah. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you, withholding nothing, withholding. Pastor has already said that the Spirit of God is so strong in this place. I wonder if we could just take a moment and let God speak to us. I know He wants to. Can we just take a moment and just lift our hands and say, God, speak to us today. God, we need to hear from you today. In the name of Jesus, God. Do not be misled. Do not be misled. Do not be misled. You cannot prepare for the thing you fear. My love, perfect love, casteth out fear. I will prepare you for those things which you cannot prepare yourself for. Do not suppose that you can build a wall that will protect you from those things that you fear but my love will surround you and I will count round about you, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's receive that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
You may be seated. There's a really deep move of the Spirit here, and I can, I can certainly connect with it as I know uh, all things being equal unless the Lord changes, kind of know where we're headed, the direction we're going in today. But we have some other things to do, and this will not hinder the Spirit. Any time that we show honor to whom honor is due, it's not going to hinder the moving of the Spirit. We don't need to think that if we take time out to show honor, that God will not be able to move. That simply is not the case. So, and we have, uh, last week, our pastor turned 30 years old, the big 3-0. He is forever out of his 20s unless he goes over 100 and starts the second go-round. He will not see 20s anymore. And, uh, you know, it, it does, looking at him, I think, you know, that I see the youth in him. I see the maturity, but I see the youth, and I think that Jesus was 30 years old when he went into it, engaged himself in ministry. 30. Jesus was young. He had to borrow a body to even age. But he was young in the body he borrowed. And, but he served us, and he served us well. And I appreciate Brother Michael Patterson, and we're going to honor him today for his birthday, take a little time here. And we have, uh, the church has given already, some have given already toward a gift for him. And we have the gift, but some others has mentioned that they'd like to give for an opportunity to give. So we're going to give you an opportunity. The ushers are going to come, and we're going to give you an opportunity to give in an offering that will be for Brother Michael. Now, you don't have to give if you've given already. Uh, this is just so that you will not feel like you didn't have an opportunity to be a part in this because whatever you give will go either toward the gift and if there is something beyond that then uh, we will give that to him as a love offering from his church now you may uh, you may give it back he's got enough of me in him but anyway we're going to do this for him so you you just do as you feel led in the spirit to do and then uh, following that we have uh, where the ash is going to come back and we have some other things to do and some things to present to you today. But we thank you for the love that you've shown. As the bishop, I deeply appreciate the love you've shown for the Michael Patterson. And I, I thought that you would in my spirit. I knew that you would love him because you love me. And I knew that you would love him. And it's been an exciting and a beautiful thing to see how you have loved him. And I want you to know that I'm forever indebted to you for your kindness and your love to Brother Michael Patterson and his family. We thank you for that. We're going to pray, and the ushers will serve you, and you can share in this birthday offering for Pastor Michael. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity today to honor the man of God, our pastor. We pray that you will bless the gift and bless the giver. In Jesus' name. And everyone together said amen. Amen. God bless you. spoken with you and you're going to have something to say. If I could ask all of you to come to the front for me real quick. It's like a, I got some people scattered throughout the uh, congregation and they're going to come up and they're having just a quick something to say. 
uh, to our pastor for his birthday. I think a lot of times, y'all can come up, come on up here. I think a lot of times we, uh, we're on the platform, and so we just kind of rely on ourselves just to do everything. And we just really wanted to give people an opportunity, just people that are scattered throughout our congregation, to tell our pastor how much he means to us and what a great man of God he is in our lives. Amen? Amen. At first, we're going to ask Brother Clell Eskew if he'll be the first one. They're going to keep it like two to three minutes. And so uh, we appreciate you just working with us on that. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I, I knew this man from the time he was born. I remember him running around the church. I remember catching him one day to keep him from running up into the, the, the choir and stuff, you know, and, and he was a, he was a rambunctious. He was full of life. He was he was full of happiness, and he ran. And later on, I, an, an upright young man that, that played the drums and would come into my Sunday school class, and he was he was always polite. He was always attentive, but he always had some place to go because he knew he had to run back in here and play the drums when the service ended. And, but he was always listening. He was always polite. And I remember a young man that, that as he grew up, you know, he had difficulties in, in the church, and, but he never had difficulty with the church. I remember, I remember staying connected. I remember seeing him one night, and, and uh, you know, um, he didn't see me, and I saw him, and I thought, you know, God's going to do something with you in spite of what is going on. You know, God, God favors us because it, I, I remember seeing him when he first come into the ministry and, and looking at him and thinking, you know, this young man is going places. And, and, and one of the first things he did was he married a spectacular young lady. And, and that completed him. And it made him more of the man that I thought he was going to be. He was over there a minute ago. And I, I watched him and, and I've, I've, I've watched him develop. And the one, I want to tell you there's words that describe this man character integrity and the ability to listen and understand and to grow he's always been a gentleman I've never known him to be anything else I've never known him to be anything other than a man of God I've never known him that I didn't see him through the eyes of faith surpassing everything that even he has ever dreamed of being. I am so very proud to call this man my pastor. You going places, brother? Praise God. I love you. Happy birthday. I haven't known him quite as long as Brother SQ has, but I've known him since he was 10 years old. And when I came to Faith Tabernacle, I knew him as the son of Pam and Ricky Patterson, and I knew Ricky Patterson from youth camps. <laughs> and that's a whole group of other stories that can be told. But I watched him, and he was the grandson of uh, Brother uh, Patterson, now Dr. Patterson minister friend of mine and I didn't think a great deal about Ricky Patterson uh, <clears throat> nor did I think much about Michael Patterson uh, watched him grow the Bible speaks of and, and he grew and he grew on multiple levels but the Bible speaks of a fivefold ministry and one of those ministries is being a pastor there are men who are called of God to be ministers but not every minister has a pastor's heart. Uh, there are fine men who are great preachers, who are great teachers, but not every one of them has a pastor's heart. Uh, this man, who is now 30 years old, has a pastor's heart. And that is that impacts Faith Tabernacle. The Bible speaks, and we're aware of, the Bible <clears throat> says that he places watchmen on the wall and we understand that that watchman is there in a position to be able to see things that we cannot see from a spiritual standpoint and God gives him insight there but the Bible also speaks and says that there are watchmen that walk around the city and there are also watchmen that are among us let me tell you where I think the Lord has placed uh, this man yes he's on the wall but he's not above us 
He's placed on the wall there to see things that we cannot see, and God will give him insights as a pastor, but not placed on the wall to lord over us, nor put himself into a position of greatness. He has made him a watchman to walk around the city. So his love is not just for a group of people that are here at Faith Tabernacle, but his love is for those who are all at Faith Tabernacle, who are connected with Faith Tabernacle, and people that he comes in contact with that he wants to be part of Faith Tabernacle. And then the Bible says there, there are watchmen among us. He will be the first to tell you that he takes this after his grandfather and he's not the greatest, greatest construction worker in the world. But he has a heart to get in there and when the bathrooms are being worked on, he was there doing that work. He is among us because he's not above us, although God put him on the wall. He is with us, but he is around us because God gives him that ability to see in, in a scope that we can't always see. And he's among us, not to try to win or curry favor, but he's there because he loves the people at Faith Tabernacle. Several weeks ago, he preached the message, and, and I was listening to him, and I told uh, Dr. Patterson later, and even said this to Pastor Michael, I said, you know what? You believe everything that you're saying. There are men who have been part of, Dr. Patterson and I have known some folks, and I didn't know this at the time, but it was revealed to me later, who said, I really never believed this, all of this message. I just wanted to be in fellowship with these guys. Or I didn't believe this part of that part. Um, this man that is now my pastor believes everything that he preaches, folks. It's not just something that has been painted on him. He's died in the wool. It is part of who he is. And as he continues to be blessed of God, so will we be blessed of God because his heart's in the right place. He's got the heart of a pastor. Congratulations on being 30. Hope we get to give you many more of those. You've been a good student. You're still learning. Thank you for letting me give you counsel when I do. And we love you very, very much. God bless you. oldest of knowing him since before he was so so I got it all on you <laughs> no I, I I've just put down a lot of things here good decisions bad decisions and decision means firmness of mind with your upbringing and your mentor I mean you know you got you had the best and it, it just just stay with that firmness of mind in the word and um, stay firm in the word and out of respect now I, I find this slacking I guess would be a word in in other parts of the church world but to say brother Michael you know I just you're like one of my kids and I still can't just call you Michael because you're a pastor now and you deserve the respect of being called brother Michael or brother well Patterson not yet but <laughs> anyway <laughs> at least brother Michael you know I mean you've earned that and um, you're a good example down some just some words that uh, describe you and I, I'm, I'm gonna cry <laughs> but I mean like one of my kids um, I, you are respectful you're honorable you're polite you're patient you're kind you're giving you're a gentleman you're a man of God. And us old folks got to have some of the young ones coming up doing it. So God has chosen a good one. And 
I appreciate you. Happy birthday. Who knew that over seven years ago, when you sat in my chair, I would be calling you my pastor? I write things down because I stay in overload and I want to remember them. Pastor, birthdays are a time of celebration with the ones we love. Pastor, I am honored to be able to celebrate with you on your special day. You have blessed my life and so many others through your faithful ministry. Behind every successful church is a selfless shepherd willing to give himself fully to his flock. Jesus told us there is no greater love than that of a man willing to lay down his life for his friends. Pastor, your life has demonstrated how much you truly love your congregation. Proverbs 16:31. Gray hair is a crown of splendor. It is attained in the way of righteousness. Inasmuch as you have not attained your righteousness through gray hair, today is a glorious day for you. I appreciate your faithfulness and wish you the very best of birthdays. May you have many more as you continue to serve the Lord in the ministry he has given to you. You are truly an apostle of your generation. Happy birthday. Praise the Lord, church. What can I say about my pastor? I haven't been knowing, I haven't known him as long as some of you have. But I come to find out just a pretty good guy. I thought one time I thought Bishop was his father. But when I found out his father was the guy back there, I said, Lord, please forgive him. <laughs> it's not his fault. 2007, Bishop preached the message. I forgot the title of it, but I did not forget the word. It was in remembrance. He said that, you know, a lot of times we go through things and we pray and we ask God to bless us or to help us or to heal us. And we think God has forgotten. But he didn't forget didn't forget. I'm going to flip this another way here. Pastor, I remember when I first came into this church. I remember you standing right here and you was preaching. I think I was sitting in the third row. I remember you jumping up from here up on top of the pool. Scared me half to death. I remember when the Holy Ghost hit you, I remember you rolling down up in here. You see, I, a lot of us didn't know what was going on. But if we look at what God has done to this young man, a man that is very easy to talk to, a man that know how to lead his flock, a man that have the utmost respect for each and every one of us including including the children you know there was time that I felt that I couldn't talk to this young man but one time I was helping him move and I remember I was I had just enough time in the midst of that just to talk to Pastor Jess for a minute never thought that he was going to wind up being my pastor but pastor, I can't speak for no one else, but I can for me. You're number one in my book. Pastor, you have shown that God is able to do all things. Be able to take us from some situation and shape us into things that he want us to be. And he did a marvelous job on you. I'm proud to be here. 
I, I, when, 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 when Brother Ashley called me and asked me would I do this, the joy that came over me, that me, this old big guy right here, is able to stand up and say something about my pastor. That was a blessing. But it's an honor that I'm able to do this. I love you. And I always will. There's nothing that you can ask me to do that I won't do. Not your father. For you. <laughs> because, because, Pastor, you are that kind of person. That's right. You have shown us that we can follow you. Because for every step that you take, we can take that step with you. And we are able to say, that's my pastor. You know why? Because we're proud of him. You know, I, 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 I'll be up in New York sometime, and uh, I get a phone call from my bishop, and he'll tell me, Brother, pa Brother Patterson and myself just got through praying for you. Yeah. And you know, that sits off a light bulb in me because then, you know, instead of me talking about the things that I should talk about, I talk about my pastor and my bishop. You know, and I believe that if any of them come down here right now, they may know more about you than some of them that is in here because I talk about the things that you teach me and the things that you preach to me. You know, because you know something? There's not everybody can preach. Everybody can't lead. Only the ones that God placed to do that is able to do it. And I thank God for you. I thank God 30 years that you are now. I pray to God that he'll allow you to be around here many, 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 many more. Amen. You are right, Pastor. You're a good, good man. Your family. And I love you all. And I want to wish you a happy birthday and many, many more. Love you, man. truly say that you have really been a blessing to us when you became pastor and you were younger I was like oh Lord you know where are we going now but when God's hand is in whatever happens it'll always turn out all right and I was just talking to the Lord, and I was thinking about you after um, Brother Neil had called and asked would I say something. And I don't like to get in front of people and talk. I get so nervous. But um, what I was, what God had laid on my heart, the scripture he had, had laid on my heart for you was let your light continue to shine before me so that you can continue to show forth his good works and glorify him, your father, which is in heaven. And I can truly say from the time that you became my pastor until now, you have really matured and grown. And not only that, you know how to be personable with like someone has said, the children as well as us old folks. <laughs> but um, I want to say that I wish you the uh, a happy birthday and many more years and continue to allow God to direct your path. Okay. I've always, I've never had problems coming to you. You've always been so open. And I'm hearing from others the same thing. You just continue to let God's light shine. Let him work through you. And when you do that, you don't have to worry about anything. Everything else will just fall right in place. I love you, and I wish you the happiest birthday, blessed birthday ever. God bless you. I love you. 
very much. The end of that, but she loved me very much. Well, Pastor, you know, I'm not far behind you in age, <laughs> four months, but you're a good friend, great pastor. Um, I've known you my whole life, pretty much grew up together. Um, I don't think I could see myself going to another church or sitting under another pastor or even Big Chef near you too. But thank you for everything that you do. I love you and I love your family. See you. called me I was on my job and a number came across that I didn't have plugged into my phone now that I do when it rings again I won't answer <laughs> but um, I just want you to know how much that my family appreciates you and just for you just bringing us in and just loving us for who we are I mean I've known the Patterson family all my life I kind of grew up with your brother Ricky I'm sorry and I've just sat under you know, Bishop some, and, but it has been an experience because I am much older, but, you know, it's, you're, you're awesome, and when I, as I was sitting down, I had wrote some things out, I'm not even going to read it, but I was reading them to my workers at, you know, my co-workers, and they were like, well, how old is he, and I was trying to explain, you know, and he's just an awesome man, awesome man, everybody's wanting to come here now because <laughs> of just one little thing that I had written down, but um, I just want to thank you just opening your doors here for my family. I love you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm used to speaking in front of people shorter than me. Um, <laughs> When Brother Ashley called me on Friday, I think my exact words were, I got this, you know, just like that. And then about 30 seconds later, I started thinking about what I was going to say. And then the thou shalt not cry prayer started going over in my head. So I'm going to do my best to get through this. Um, I think I started coming here when I was 17 years old. And I have yet to see gray hair on your head. But I know if there is one, half of them are probably from me. Um, you and your family have always been there from the smallest of issues with me from, you know, oh my goodness, I gotta go wash my hands 25,000 times today, and you deal with that and my insane babbling to, you know, times when I honestly did not know what I was gonna do, and you were there. <laughs> Thou shalt not cry. <laughs> but um, I just wanna say thank you, and I love you very much, you and your family. You have blessed me. What can I say that hasn't already been said? I mean, you, we've been best friends since birth. We, we grew up together and have so many stories that I couldn't say that you probably don't need to. <laughs> But um, I couldn't ask for a better friend. Any, any time anything could go wrong, you were there. You could, you could be there and, and help me through it, take care of all of it. I just appreciate you more than anything, and I appreciate this church. Speaking of this church, there's probably not much in this church that we haven't touched and, <laughs> and tore up and, bro and fixed. But um, I, I love you, buddy, and appreciate it. Aha. Uh -huh. 
I just kind of stepped in for a minute here, okay? Well, I just want to tell you something. The boy's been preaching since he was about three years old. So that's about 27 years. Uh, first time he preached, we had to take him to the hospital. He fell and busted his head and gashed his head open. I don't know if it was the first time or not, but we had to take him to the hospital two or three times for falling, and one of them was for preaching. He had a pulpit, and I think Corbin's got it. Logan's got it now. So we started him out young. And, um, but I just want him to know that I appreciate you. Um, I don't know of a father that could be more proud of his son than I am of you. Uh, a couple of times I didn't know what you were going to do. You got mixed up with a peacock over there. I ain't going to say no names, but Scott over there one time with a band. And y'all thought y'all was going to go on a world tour. <laughs> you know, I was going to cut you back down to size. And your mama told me to shut up and leave you alone. You'd realize what you was doing later. But, you know, I'm being impatient. Uh, but we we'll kind of let you do your own thing. And you found your way back to where you should be. And uh, I just want to tell you, I'm proud of you, son. You are a great pastor. You're a great father. And um, I don't see it ever happening, but if you ever stray from what you've been taught, I will still snatch a knot in your rear end. <laughs> if I don't, if Poppy don't get to you first, I will. But I love you, and I appreciate you. God bless you. gift and um you know i will say that pastor you became my pastor before you became the church's pastor and um and it was really hard for me because uh, i had uh, dr patterson has been my only pastor my whole life and um but i remember that you were there on what i consider the most devastating day of my life and you and your wife were there and have been every day since and that's when you became my pastor. And I'm so grateful. And we love you guys so much. And this is just a small token of our and Faith Tabernacle's appreciation for you. We hope you have a wonderful, wonderful birthday. Happy birthday. sure know how to keep a man humble. <laughs> you may be seated. Thank you for this honor. And um, well, let me open this thing up here. I, I am speechless and y'all are making it difficult for me to preach in just a second. <laughs> I'm going to have to have them sing another song before I preach. <laughs> With appreciation, Pastor, your ministry and your life are making a wonderful difference. And thanking God for you as you serve with a willing heart, a joyful spirit, and continued faithfulness. Enjoy God's rich blessings on your birthday. Happy birthday, Pastor. We love you, FTC. Um, I, I tell you what, Corbin and Logan, come here and help me real quick. Come here, boys. I want to let them come. My wife can come as well. They help me open this because um, I, I know it's my birthday, but I couldn't uh, number one have made it without my family and um, been a pastor without them. And um, boys, you want to help me open this gift? Can you do that? Can you help me? Yeah. Let's bring it down here. Let's see what it is. Here. All right. Help me out. Oh, there's something there. Oh, my gracious. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my gracious. I didn't know it came in boxes like this. <laughs> thank you. Um, it's an Apple Watch. And um, so thank you very, very much and for this. You see that? And um, I will, I promise I will put it to good use and um, I'll probably wear it tonight. Um, I've got another watch that my dad and grandfather gave to me, so I'll have to switch them out every now and then. But um, thank you so much. This is awesome. And um, uh, thank you all so much for your giving. And they, they pulled one on me today because I, 
had, if I would have known they were trying to receive an offering today, I would have stopped them from doing it. Um, and so I, I do whatever comes in. I want to make sure that it goes straight into the work of the Lord. And I thank you so much for this honor um, on my 30th birthday. I didn't know where I would be when I turned 30 years old, exactly where I would be. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, this is a great place to be. It's, and it's great to be here celebrating this with you, November 19th, 1985, at 7.27 p.m. There's probably about this many people in the waiting room of the hospital. My dad, uh, it took them a while, um, and so my dad came out. This is a story from Nana. My dad came out, uh, and Nana went running to him because he was coming out alone. And so she went running to him, said, Ricky, what's wrong, what's wrong? And he said, nothing, Mama, we just had twin boys. And I think he called her from fainting, but that was a lie. <laughs> Dr. Kassam uh, who said, Ricky, you better go out there and tell your mom that everything's okay, even though it's taking a little bit longer. <laughs> and um, uh, I am... I was born and raised here in Rockdale County, and I have a heart for this county, this city. I also have a heart to expand the work of the Lord, and we've done that. In, in fact, in a moment, is now a good time for me to talk, talk about it? Um, thank you, guys. See, servants, right there. Thank you for cleaning up. Um, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, babe. You're welcome. Did you tell them what I wanted? I did. Oh, yeah, of course you did. You know me. <laughs> thank you, boys. You want to... Take it over there for me. Thank you so much. And um, so while we're, we're talking here, um, the Lord has given us a vision. And I was glad to be able to kind of debut the vision uh, officially on my birthday, on November 19th, um, this past Thursday. And the vision is to have one church, multiple locations. And... I know that there is vision when it comes to things of this church and bathroom remodel projects and upkeeps and, and you know new carpets and chair, chairs and new programs and things like that. But uh, the Lord moved on me to, to take the vision further than just maybe the physical appearance of things, but to take it in uh, because it's all about souls, folks. It's all about people. And we love love people and we want to expand our reach and so I'm happy you can put this slide on the screen now I'm happy to announce today that we have launched a third campus uh, in Madison Georgia and we are turning our Jackson daughter work church into a campus and so no longer after January 1st it will not be Lighthouse Apostolic Church anymore, but it will be Faith Tabernacle, the Jackson campus, and as well as Conyers here, of course, our main church, main campus, and then we have launched the Madison campus. It's an online thing only right now. They, in fact, some people may be watching us right now, but we have interest in pe uh, uh, from families in the area and surrounding areas that want to attend service as soon as we secure a location. I've been in touch with a pastor there of another church of a Baptist church asking him if we could rent out his facilities. And so we have decided to do that if their church will allow us to rent that and we will start that very soon. And so with your prayers and your support, I know that we can make this happen. And no longer will, be, will we be Faith Tabernacle, just one location, but we will be a multi-campus church. We're all part of the same family, same body of Christ, but we're going to extend our reach beyond the second smallest county of the state of Georgia, Rockdale County, and as far as landmass goes. But we will extend it into Jackson, Butts County there, and Madison there, and, uh, and beyond. Who knows what the Lord is going to do. On my 30th birthday, celebrating that, I had no idea where the Lord was going to exactly take us, but now I know, and I couldn't be more excited about what God is doing through his people and allowing us to be a part of it. God bless you Amen. in Jesus name. Amen.
Let's give our pastor one more hand clap of appreciation. Pastor, the, I, the Apple people told me to tell you that if you need any help, they'll be more than glad to help you set it up and all that good stuff. So, um, I'm glad for a pastor that stands on the promises of God. He hears the voice of God. He follows the voice of God. And that's what he teaches his people, that we should stand on the promises of God. If God has given you something and promised you something, the Bible says that his promises are yea and amen. God never re- never backs out of a, of a promise that he gives to us. And I think we should thank the Lord for that and just begin to worship him as we sing this song.
just a minute, our pastor is going to come. I don't know exactly how you feel, but I want to share with you how I feel. I want him to preach to me. I want him to preach the word. I, I can read newspapers and get current events from world prophets. I can, I can see the news or hear the news. I can read books or magazines, but I want to come to church. And I want somebody to preach to me the word of God. Can we stand before we introduce him in just a minute? They're going to sing this again. If we need anything, we need the word. We don't need to hear about the word. We need to hear the word. More than just how the word connects to the newspaper, tell me what the word says. Preach to me the promise of God. Preach to me the life-changing power of the word of God. I need to know it. I need to hear it over and over and over and over and over and over. We ought to be a word church. We're a word church that sings, but we're a word church first. We're a word church that prays, but we're a word church first. So they're going to sing this. We're standing on the promises. That's his word. And that's going to be his introduction. Our pastor's going to come, and we want him to preach to us. And the congregation said, Amen. One more time. Amen. We're going to see what we're praying for. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord and give him praise for he's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Magnify him today. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. If you would remain standing with me for the reading of the word of the Lord, I would like to turn your attention to the book of James, chapter 2. We will begin reading at verse number 18 through verse 20. And I thank you again so much. It means so much to me to, for everyone to, what they said and the sincerity behind that. I know you meant it and because I can feel it. Sure. And I understand that um, sometimes we can't always express in words how we feel, but I do know that we can show it and you show it. And I thank you for that. You don't have to come up on the platform and take a microphone and state it and declare it, but you do it by showing it to me. And I love you for that, and I appreciate you. And I'm looking forward to many, many more birthdays, many more years. I may not reach 120, but I'm headed that direction. And I'm looking forward to it. And I'm okay whenever the Lord wants to come back. He just comes on back. Me and my family, church family, will go and be with the Lord, and that's what I'm, I'm searching for, I'm seeking after, I, I want to go to heaven, folks, and I want to take as many people with me as possible, I want to have an influence and impact on people's lives, and uh, that's why we, I believe the Lord has given us this vision to go out and reach the lost, and um, not only do I believe that the Lord wants to show us the miracle of salvation, but He wants to show us the miracle of healing, of deliverance, 
of setting people free. And, and he wants to show us uh, financial miracles. And he wants to show us relationship miracles. He wants, to, uh, we, he wants to show us so many things, but we've got to have the faith to make it happen. God wants to do it for us, but we've got to have the faith, and that is the key. Today I want to preach from James chapter 2. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that, that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? And to the word of the Lord today, I want to preach to you, not very long, but I want to preach to you on moving faith. Moving faith. Let's bow our heads together and pray. Mighty God, we love you. We praise your name. Thank you for all that you've done and all that you're continuing to do. Thank you for this opportunity to come into your house to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, thank you for allowing us to be a part of the greatest entity on the face of this planet, the body of Christ. Lord, we pray that you help us today. Speak to us. And as we respond to your word, touch us in Jesus' name. And everyone together said amen. amen. May God bless you. you. may be seated. Thank you for standing. Moving faith. In verse 18 of our text today, G James teaches us two very important faith principles. The first principle is that of faith without works is what we like to call concept faith. Somebody say concept faith. It's just having thoughts of faith. It's, it's a thought of faith. It is a concept that you have and you house. It lives right here. But the second faith principle is faith through our works. That is faith in conduct. Somebody say conduct faith. It is the acting out of our faith thoughts. So it is entirely good to have a concept faith, but we also must move it from concept to conduct faith. In verse 20, he gives us his conclusion in regard to faith and works. He tells us that faith without works is dead faith. He gives us an example in verse number 19 of faith that is dead. He tells us that the devils believe in one God and tremble. You see, the Greek word for believe here is that, that is used is the verb pisio, pisio, and it means to believe that something is true. And the same Greek word is used to describe our belief in God. So the devil actually believes that God is one. He has the revelation and he knows the truth about the Godhead, but he never acts on that behalf. So it is of no consequence to him. It is of no benefit to him at all. It is dead faith concept faith uh, that never moves beyond a thought will never move to fruition. Uh, it never materializes. It fails to manifest itself through works. It becomes dead faith. Amen. James also tells us, however, that there is a way to get faith out of our head and into action. There is a way to get it from concept to conduct, and he calls it works. He's not speaking about the works of the flesh or the works of a man, but rather he is speaking of works that are the manifestation of our concept faith in God. It is a moving faith and it will move us into the miraculous, into the supernatural. 
moving faith is the manifestation of concept faith. It is concept faith at work. And there are many examples of moving faith in the Scripture. And I will name a few today. It is a faith that will move people from the mundane into the miraculous. And God has miraculous things in store for this church. For faith tabernacle if we would just move from concept to conduct you will be blown away by what what God wants to do in your life but you got to get it out of here and work it and move it from concept into conduct God wants to do something for you if you just get out and do it He wants to give you the healing that you've been praying for. But there comes a time that you got to step out on faith uh, and move it from just a thought uh, into conduct. Uh, It can't remain in here because remaining in here won't do you any good. Uh, In fact, that will be dead faith. Uh, But we have to move it from concept to conduct uh, and then we will see the hand of the Lord working in our life. How do I know this, you ask? Well, let me tell you, the Bible is full of so many different examples of taking a concept faith and moving it into conduct faith. Let me tell you, remember Mr. Blind Barnabas? Remember hearing about him? It moved him from his beggar's post to where Jesus had called him. And this moving faith carried him from the mundane to the miraculous, and he came away seeing. No longer was he blind, Barnabas, but he was seeing Barnabas. And for the ten lepers, it moved them to present themselves to the priest like Jesus had told them to do. And their moving faith carried them from the mundane to the miraculous. And as they went looking for the priest, they were healed. I wonder if we could take a a, a cue uh, and see the example that these ten lepers are, are giving to us that whenever the Lord tells us that it's done, whether we actually see it done at that moment or not, We need to move uh, in His Word uh, and claim the miraculous, uh, the supernatural that He is giving to us. Because if we do not do it, our faith will die. If these ten lepers would not have obeyed the Lord and gone and showed themselves to the priest, they would have never received their healing. Sometimes the Lord wants to heal you over a process of time. And, and He wants to, He understands that He's given you a promise, uh, but the, the point between the promise and the payoff is called the process. Yeah. And we've got, to learn, we've got to learn to appreciate the process that the Lord has us in at this time. And we have to be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, in due season, ye shall reap if ye faint not. God wants to take us from the mundane to the miraculous, from concept to conduct faith, but we've got to listen to Him. We've got to have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit is speaking to us and showing us. And we, just as the ten lepers did, if we would step out on faith and say, I may not see my healing or my miracle happening right now, but I I have enough faith uh, to step out uh, and listen to the Lord uh, and follow His instructions uh, and go do what He's called me to do. And by the time you get there, the Lord has already prepared the way for you. And He's already uh, had prepared what He wants to give to you. We've just got to take it from concept to conduct. For the... For the... Uh, Seraphonician woman. It was moving past rejection and moving past rebuke and it moved her past her lack of entitlement to embrace a miracle for her child. You see, and in doing this, she moved from the mundane to the miraculous and her child was healed. 
Let me tell you, upwards of 500 people were there when Jesus was given His final farewell address just before His ascension. But for about 380 of them, their faith was only concept faith. And after Jesus ascended, they just disappeared. They disappeared off the scene. But for about 120 of them, the story is completely different. Their faith was a moving faith. And it moved them from the place of ascension uh, to the upper room. Uh, And they went from the mundane waiting uh, to the miraculous day of Pentecost outpouring uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Let me tell you, God is telling you to move. uh, And if He's telling you to move, uh, you need to listen to Him uh, and step out on faith. uh, And God will take you from the mundane uh, to the miraculous. Concept faith makes us aware of the miraculous. But it really doesn't change anything. The devil has a miraculous revelation of the oneness of God. It's a revelation that many Christians still struggle with, but it has done him absolutely no good. They are still sitting there shaking in their boots but they never go anywhere. But moving faith. Somebody say moving faith. Moving faith actually connects us to the miraculous. It is the assurance and the title deed for things hoped for and for things divinely guaranteed. Moving faith will act on what cognitive faith embraces even though it isn't experienced by the physical senses. It is this kind of faith that has always moved God's people into the miraculous. Moving faith gets us out of the boat and has us walking on the water. It has us picking up our sick bed and running through the temple healed from being sick. It has us washing in the pool of Bethesda and receiving our sight. Moving faith has us loading up a slingshot and bringing down a giant that nobody else could defeat. It has us picking up a jawbone of a donkey and slaying a thousand enemy soldiers. That's the kind of moving faith I'm talking about. About today it has us building an ark in order to save a remnant of humanity all as a testimony to the grace of God all for the glory of God see concept faith is foundational to the miraculous don't count concept faith out In fact, it's vital because we've got to have it somewhere. And God has put put it here in concept. But we can't leave it there. It's foundational to the miraculous when it manifests itself through our works. When it goes, when it doesn't just stay in concept, but it goes from concept to conduct. But if we fail to do this, then we kill our faith because faith without works is dead. My God, if this world labels me anything, I pray that they cannot label me as a faith killer. If they can say anything about this church of faith tabernacle. Don't let it be said that we just had it right here and never did anything with it. Uh, Let it never be said uh, that the the miraculous manifestations of God's power was not at work uh, in faith tabernacle or in the lives of His people. But my God, I pray that we can show this world uh, that faith without works is dead, uh, but faith with your works is alive and well. uh, And you can receive the miraculous. God is seeking to impart faith to all of us. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. 
You see, faith comes from listening, but it's listening through the means of the Word of God. You've got to listen to the right thing. Yes, sir. God is able to put a word of faith into a sermon. Uh, put a word of faith into a testimony. He can put a word of faith uh, into a choir song or into a solo uh, or into a drama or, or anything. God can put a word and faith into it. Uh, he can put it uh, in a dream uh, or into a vision. Uh, or He can give it to us through spiritual gifts uh, such as a word of knowledge uh, or a word of faith. Uh, however He decides to do it, uh, once we receive the word of faith it comes to us as a concept and God expects us to transform it into a moving faith and turn it into works and take it from concept to conduct from mundane to miraculous from death to life from neutral to drive from stop to go we've got to get up time is wasting folks it's high time We've got to put our faith in motion. Bishop preached high time last Sunday. If you were not here, you need to get the tape or listen to it on SoundCloud or watch it on YouTube, however you want to do it, but everybody needs to hear that message. Maybe it, God just ordained it uh, to be right around my 30th birthday, Bishop, because if anything, it set me on fire one more time, uh, and, and it got me going. Uh, and, and I understand that people laugh at me with my cr the crazy ideas that, that God has, has given to me, and I even think they're crazy, folks. I agree with you. I don't know how we're going to do what God wants us to do, but I understand uh, that if I just keep it here, then it's going to be dead. But if I get out and I take a leap of faith and I say, God, I'm going to put one front foot in front of the other and I'm dependent on you to lead me and guide me, direct me in the way you want me to go, i got to get out and do something. I told the church in Jackson today, Sister McPherson is not feeling well. She just turned 90 years old. But she is a faithful woman of God. And she comes to church every single time she is physically able to do. But let me tell you, at 90 years old or at 30 years old, we don't have much time left. We got to get to work, folks. I enjoy seeing you here today and those that could not be here today. If, those, if we had our children back in here and our staff and our nursery kids in here and then those that were not here that, that had to call out today because of other things, uh, this place would be full, folks. Can you not see that God is growing Faith Tabernacle, Conyers? And there's so much more to come. But we've got to step out into the supernatural. And we've got to step out of our comfort zone. And we've got to understand that it's going to require more work on our part. We can't settle for the mundane anymore. We don't have time to settle anymore. But we've got to get up and do something about it. I'm excited about uh, uh, what Cindy said. They all want to come to church now. All, all her co-workers. I tell you, if they don't come to church, then I'll come to your work. And then in their off time, in their five-minute breaks, I'll teach five-minute Bible studies. I don't care what we have to do, whether we get them in this building or in Jackson or in Madison. My God, we've got a world to reach out to and a world that needs to be saved. And they can only be saved through the gospel of Jesus Christ. People look at me crazy when I tell them I worked my tail off to get where I am today. I said, it really that much work? Yeah, it was that much work. And if you want to be successful in your life, then you've got to get up uh, and stop being mundane, sitting on the couch, eating a bag of potato chips. It's the only analogy I could come up with at the time. And get out and do something. we got to move our faith from a concept to conduct. And that means putting our work into it. Putting our blood and our sweat and our tears, our time, our energy, our resources. We've got to do more, folks, and we need to give God our very best. 
We don't serve a mundane God. We serve a miraculous God. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. We expect the best out of Him. So why shouldn't He expect the best out of us? we got to get up and do something about it, folks. Uh, we got to put our faith in action. And you know what? If that means showing up to church earlier, then show up to church earlier. If that means staying later, then stay later. If it means actually getting on YouTube and listening to the songs uh, that the music director sends out the night before and practice actually practicing them, then do it. And come in here prepared to give God your best. And then people worry about, well, they're just not giving their best. Well, you know what? If we would give God our best, then we would automatically give people our best. We need to come in here prepared uh, and say, listen, I, I'm going to do whatever it takes. Uh, I'm going to read. I'm going to study. I'm going to practice. I'm going to read. There, uh, there is, I, I'm a musician, folks, and, or have been, and I still play every, every once in a while the drums, but there is nothing more uh, irritating to me than coming into a practice and having sat there and rehearsed the song the night before 10 and 20 and 30 times and then coming into a musician's practice where none of the other musicians had given a flip about listening to it. You don't want to come to a church where the pastor hasn't prayed and studied and heard from the Lord to give you a word. So why in the world would you uh, not expecting Him to give us His best? Why can't you be expected to give it your best as well? Amen. If somebody hurts your feeling, that's no reason to get out of church. I got a lot of people that hurt my feelings. I was very encouraged today, folks. <laughs> really? I'm going to take this tape home and listen to it again. Because <laughs> I was so encouraged. But you know what encourages me the most when I see people come here and they don't have much to give, but they're giving it their best. And they come in after having a tough week and a hard time, their relationships with their family and husbands and wives and daughters and sons are in a wreck. And, and, and then people come in here with vehicle problems that, that they were riding here on a prayer some of them didn't have the, the money to give into the offering, but God told them to give their last penny and they gave it anyways. They don't know how they're going to provide for their family. They, they just lost their job or, or they can't find employment or, or, or school is tough. There's no, but they give it their best. What did the Bible tell us about the widow's might? Well, she didn't have much, but she gave everything that she had. My God, I tell you, I, I'm looking forward to the miraculous manifestations of God's power in this place and it's going to be active by, activated by your faith uh, and by giving it everything you've got. Uh, everything you've got, uh, every single time you've got it. Uh, there, it is time to stop holding things back uh, and to go out uh, and to possess uh, what God has for us. Uh, there is greatness amongst us. Uh, there is great young men and great young women uh, in this place today. Uh, not only young, but I promise you if you are older and you think that your best days are behind you, I'm here to tell you today that God wants you to know your best days are not behind you, but your best days are ahead of you. Uh, but you've got to get it out of here into here and do something with your faith. We want to provide the very best that we can for you. That's why I put my own time and energy and finances into it. That's why after Sunday, I can't take off on Monday. Some pastors, they and even the counselors say pastor you've got to take time for yourself have a day off and it needs to be Monday you work so hard on Sunday but I tell them I just can't bring myself to do that I will go and sit in my recliner and as most as comfortable as that thing is mom got me a new one for my birthday it was great and I'm I'm thankful for that but I would go stir crazy if I was sitting there in my, my recliner knowing that I could be out doing something for the people of God 
or for the people who don't know anything about God. If I don't have anything to do in the office, uh, then I need to get out on the streets. If I don't have any administrative work or, or planning or, or anything like that to do, then I've got to get out there and I've got to reach somebody. I can't just sit still because it's gone from here into here and it has uh, uh, totally possessed me and I can't stay still knowing that there's something out there that God has called me to do. You think that I'm crazy when I say we're going to go to multiple services here at Faith Tabernacle. I'm praying to God that we got to go to triple services or quadruple services. And I understand the reality of it is that I can't preach every one of them. But I can be the senior pastor of the church. And just because I may not preach doesn't mean I've stopped pastoring. I, I have men and women of God in here that if you get ready, if you're ready and you're willing and you're available, then we want to use you. And there, there are people that we are losing right now just because they won't come to a one o'clock service. You will, and I thank God, you got to keep coming. Yeah. <laughs> so we can do what we want to do. And it's not my vision, it's our vision. Is what the Lord has set us out to do. And God has great things in store for Madison is, is at least 45 minutes from here. But I believe as soon as we can get a, 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 a um, location secured, then we will go there and start having church. And you know what? I expect the people that come here and call this place their home to come here at 1 o'clock. And you know what? go with us again at 6 o'clock to help us in Madison. I mean, you want to do it, don't you? Even if you don't live in that area, you can come help us out. We want you to help us. We want to take you along with us. And Bishop has, has branded into me, put into me. He said, son, you've got to take your people from point A to point B to C to D. He said, you've got to take them somewhere. Because if you do not do it, then they will become dead. For without vision, the people what? Perish. And their faith without works is dead. We are not a no vision church. And we are not a dead church. Amen. We are alive and we are well and we are willing and able and available to go out there and give God our very best. Amen. Now in closing, musicians, you can come. I want to challenge you in this service today to move your faith from concept to conduct and let God take you from the mundane to the miraculous. Yeah. If God gives us concept faith to be a soul winner, then we need to move it from concept to conduct. We need to teach a home Bible study or even this, teach an online Bible study. I promise you, if you got to teach somebody, there's so many different ways you can do an online Bible study and it is from right there with your own cell phone. Most of you in here anyways. Can take your cell phone, connect to somebody online and teach them a Bible study. It can happen. I don't think we've even tapped into the online community as much as God wants us to tap into it. Yes, we have 25 to 30 plus people watching us every single Sunday online and thank you for joining by Ways of Webcast today. But that's not enough. We've got to do more. Invite the neighbors over for a backyard barbecue Bible study. You think I'm crazy? You know what? Food and the Word go hand in hand. I promise you, even if you just have to get them over there for a Bible study and then just spring it on them, let's talk about the Word. Let's do it. I'm glad Sister Walters brought her neighbors with her. And it's one of your birthdays, right? Today? Whose birthday is it? Is it, somebody? Is it your birthday? Is it your birthday? There, that birthday, I'm sorry. It's your birthday. Happy birthday to you. And you, 70 years old. Well, I'm not far behind you. <laughs> but Sister Walters here brought her neighbors, right? Neighbors? I'm sorry I had the birthday. It was just a different pew. I'm sorry. 
but broader neighbors. And thank you so much for coming today. I hope you enjoyed yourself today and any of our other guests. Thank you for coming. You're such an encouragement to us. And I pray that we are an encouragement to you as well. But we've got to get out there. And if God has given us the concept faith to be a soul winner, then let's go out there and take it from concept to conduct. Follow the Apostle Paul's example who said in 1 Corinthians 9.22, I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. That's what we're here to do. If God gives us concept faith to work with young people, then we need to move it from concept to conduct. Teach a youth Bible study. Volunteer to help out the youth workers here at this church. Volunteer to help with CDC or All Stars or Nursery. We need to move our concept faith into our conduct and put our faith to work. Let's all stand together. Brother Clell Eskew and Brother Bo Chandler. I didn't see Brother Bo today. Brother Eskew's there and our jail ministry outreach team. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brother Eskew, but they worked in one of our local jails. And during the time they were there, over 3,000 were prayed through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Over 3,000 souls. That sounds like the day of Pentecost, doesn't it? They were prayed through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the enemy worked against us. And the door was closed. And for a season, we have waited upon the Lord. However, the bishop has spoken with Brother Eskew and, and God has given us a new concept faith. A fresh concept faith. A, a revived concept faith. Uh, and we are going to move it into conduct faith. Uh, we are now putting our faith into works. Uh, and we are looking and fully expecting to find that open door again uh, and do greater works for the kingdom of God than ever before. In just a moment, I want everyone to come to the front. And I want you to come knowing that concept faith is that thought in your mind that God wants to give you something miraculous. It is in your mind in concept, but God put it there on purpose. And if it's to heal your marriage, then move in that direction starting now. If it's to see your children saved, then move in that direction starting now. If it's healing your brokenness, then move that way today in this service. If it's overcoming addiction, then move today. Embrace your recovery. We cannot allow our faith to die for lack of expression. We must move it from concept to conduct. We must manifest our faith by our works. See, Jesus gives us a powerful procedure principle in Mark 11, 23. says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Another translation says it like this, I assure you that what, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and doesn't waver, but believes that what is said will really happen, it will really happen. Jesus is telling us if we will move our thinking faith into a speaking faith, uh, then we can move our mountain. Uh, in Psalms 84, the Bible says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. That is a promise, folks. And today, God will withhold no good thing from them that walk uprightly. The word used for walk in Hebrew is holak, and it means to move. Somebody say to move. 
the word used for uprightly is tomim, and it means holy and completely. So God will withhold no good thing from them that move in that holy, completely place. And that place is where faith is manifest and works, and concept becomes conduct. And today, with hands lifted high, would you step out of your pews and come to this altar and put your faith to work and move it from a concept faith into a conduct faith. I challenge you today, move from concept faith to conduct faith and move your mountains, speak to your mountains and tell them, declare to them, tell them to be removed and I promise you God will withhold no good thing from you. Let's come and lift our hands to the Lord and let's worship Him.
is still moving and touching people's lives but I want us to pray specifically for brother and sister Brown today they called sister Carlene Gale earlier and um, they are not feeling well actually this brother Brown is not feeling very well at all and uh, he is having a, a very difficult day today and I understand that when it gets colder the weather gets colder his body starts uh, just kind of freezing up almost and it's hard for him to him to move and he has a lot of pain and you don't know it but to, to look at him but when he comes here and they get him out of the car and put him in the wheelchair and wheel him up here to the second or third row here he's in pain folks and he tries to take medicine to help but but he knows that that's not the answer there he's a former pastor of a great church in Jamaica and uh, we want to lift him up before in, before the Lord in prayer praying that God would just relieve his pain and uh, help him to get back to where he needs to well, Michael touched on this but you would maybe not know it just by looking at that frail man sitting in a wheelchair but that man in his day was a dynamic that's right. Tremendously powerful. Yes. An effective pastor in Jamaica. Yeah, that's right. Moving congregation with powerful words of God. That's right. That's right. Under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's yeah. right. He still comes into this church. Yeah. Comes through the back doors, praising God. That's right. He does. Yeah. He does. Praising God. Great man of God. Every honor we show him yeah. would fall short of the honor he's due. That's right. He's a great man of God. Yeah. So let's. Fall up ashes taking us. Really pray for this family. They're great people. Let's lift our hands and pray right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come before you on behalf of Brother and Sister Brown, specifically Brother Brown, oh God. Lord, we pray that you would touch his body. Lord, we pray that you would give him relief from the pain that he feels in his body, oh God. Lord, we pray that you would manifest your miraculous healing power in his body, oh God. Give him strength. Give him comfort, O oh God, for we know without a shadow of a doubt that you are the great physician and all things are possible through you. And we speak healing on his behalf, O oh God. Help him and strengthen and encourage him. And Sister Brown, God, sustain her, strengthen her, O oh God. Bless her for the woman of God that she's been to serve your man of God, Brother Brown. Touch them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for being here today. And we want you to leave this place moving your faith from a concept faith to a conduct faith. I, just, I did it this week. I put it into action this week on, a, on another level whenever I told you last Sunday that the Lord had told me to go out to Madison. And it was a thought that I had. And I was like, okay, God, you know, I, I don't know what, I'm going to ride out there, waste the gas and just, Nothing's going to happen. But he said, just trust me. And so I took my concept faith into a conduct faith. And Monday morning, after I got done with my morning routines, I didn't even make it over to Conyers that morning. I stayed in the Covington and then beyond. And I went to Madison. And would you know that, that the Lord started bringing revelation to me and started leading me in places. Did you know that they are actually, Brother Ryan told me this last night, they're actually building a Georgia zoo and safari out there in Madison. Amen. It's going to bring a lot of attention and attraction there. Folks, there's a Walmart there. <laughs> and a Waffle House and a Cracker Barrel. And I promise you, these people, these companies don't go to places where there's nobody. They go to places on purpose because they know there's a lot of people there. It's not a 24-hour Walmart yet, but it's a Walmart. <laughs> it's getting there. And so we, the, this world needs the church, and we're going to reach out, but we've got to do it from taking it from here, from concept, and put it into conduct, uh, and moving our faith. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Shake hands and be friendly.